Hello guys and welcome back to Jam Chemistry class. This is chemistry. All right, and in this class I'm going to be looking at the box diagram method of writing electronic configuration. Prior to this class, we have looked at the SPDF method, we have looked at the electron dot method, electron dot and cross method actually, and then we looked at um, the principles uh, governing road writing electronic configuration, and so on and so forth. So please, if you have not seen any of those videos, right, you should head back and watch, and watch them before what, joining us in this class. All right, do not forget that this video tutorial is brought to you by the O3 Schools Jam CBT Practice App. It is the best practice app available for you to be successful in your exam. It has all the recent and latest past questions, right? And it has some wonderful features. I'll talk about just one, and that is the JAM UTME challenge. It's a challenge that is organized for all students writing JAM to win prizes, right? This challenge is done weekly, weekly. So every week in, week out, you take a challenge, you participate in the competition, right? You see your JAM score just exactly the way you see it in your JAM exam. You see your jump score weekly, you, you practice, you, you take another challenge, you see your score again, you keep on seeing your weakness and what are your strength. You try looking for how to balance them before your jam or begins, right? There will be up to like 20 to 25 challenges before what your main jam exam. And that is why you should jump on the app immediately. Activation is just 2,500 Naira. It's a one-time payment. Once you pay, your app remains forever activated. All right? So please join me in this class and i uh, will talk about the box diagram method right so in the box diagram method we usually use boxes to represent orbitals we use boxes like this to represent orbitals and then electrons are drawn in them right as arrows then we draw electrons in these boxes as arrows that means what well, the boxes represent the orbitals and the arrows represent the electrons now, within each box, there are usually two arrows. One is usually facing upward, like this, while one is facing downward, like this. All right? Now, they are usually facing opposite directions to portray, portray that their spins are opposite. They are usually facing opposite direction to portray that their spins are opposite. Another thing is that the boxes are usually drawn at different levels. If the first box is like this, the next box is like, will be like this. The next box of higher energy will be like this, right? This one is the P orbital in what three degenerates, right? So if you see these boxes, right, the one is usually what higher than the other. One is usually displaced higher than the other. So why is this? It's because this box, this second box has higher energy, or this other orbital has higher energy than what than the first orbital, right? So even when you see your half by half, uh, uh, diagram, you see that the one s orbital and the two s orbital are not on the same level. Two s orbital has higher energy. Two p orbital has higher energy than the two s and the one s. So this is why what usually what displays what the boss of higher energy slightly what upward. All right, now we are going to what uh, see how to what write electronic configuration of what of atoms using the electron box diagram. Right now, when we are filling electrons into these boxes when we are filling electrons into these boxes we use what one's rule of maximum multiplicity one's rule of maximum multiplicity to what to fill electrons into these what boxes right and the one's rule say that what in filling electrons into orbitals electrons are filled in singly first before pairing begins so that knowledge will be very useful in this regard all right now Let's go back. Let's continue from where we stopped. Now, again, another important thing you need to know is that the p orbital. If you see the p orbital here, right? We say p orbital is what a dumbbell shaped, right? And it has what three degenerates. How many electrons does p orbital have? P orbital has six electrons, right? P orbitals can take a maximum of six electrons in three degenerates. P x, as we said, P x, P y, and P z. So that's why you are seeing that well, this P is divided into three, right? Now, also the same thing with D orbitals. D orbitals can take 10 electrons, right? In five degenerates, right? In five degenerates, right? That means if it was to be P, uh, uh, D orbital now, right? So I'm going to have a box like this, 
right? Divided into five, two, three, one, two, three, four, then five. One, two, three, four, five. So if this were d orbital, this is what it will look like. It will be it will have how I many degenerate? Five degenerates. P has three degenerates. For F, F orbital can take 14 electrons in seven degenerates. So if it was to be F now, for example, we're going to have one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. In seven degenerate like that. Simple to understand, isn't it? Now let us quickly write the electronic configuration of some atoms. Let's see those of carbon, that of oxygen, and that of neon. Now, carbon is the sixth element. That means it has what six electrons, right? So for carbon, we're going to have what? Uh, Is2, 2s2, right? What's the last one? 2p2, six electrons. So if I'm using the electron box diagram, the first bus will come, will be down like this, right? Then the next bus will come up like this. Then for the p orbital, right? Okay, let me make them uh, these two are the same. Then the p orbital will be slightly displaced, what higher, right? It has what three degenerates. All right. So now let's see. Let's fill the electrons now into the boxes. Now using Hun's rule, right? Now the first two electrons will be in this one box. One, one arrow facing upward, one arrow facing downward. The next two electrons will be in this box. One uh, 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 electron facing, one arrow facing upward, and the other arrow facing or downward. Now, when it comes to what? To the P uh, degenerate, to the P what orbital, right? Now, the has three degenerates. We we'll now use Hun's rule of maximum multiplicity to fill the electrons into the boxes. Now, the first P electrons we have what you have one facing upward then the next one will be in the next box so filling electrons singly when filling electrons into orbitals we fill them what singly first before we start pairing so you see the difference now when it comes to oxygen right now so we fill the electrons singly singly first the first one the first p the second p now let's look at oxygen for oxygen the eight uh it, it, it the eight element having eight electrons I'm going to have the first box like this. All right. Then I'm going to have the second box. Right. Then I'm going to have the third box slightly displaced upward. Right. In three degenerate. One, two, three. This is a box. So please. So now I'm going to have your, uh, your uh, this will be IS2, of course, 2S2, 2P4. Right. Now, one facing upward, one facing downward. One facing up or one facing downward. When it comes here, we start filling them singly, singly. Now we have one facing upward, one facing upward, one facing upward. Is there still one left? Yes, one is left. So we now will fill this one. Are you getting it now? So it's as simple as that. Now let's see for neon, for example. Neon is the tenth electron. So that would be uh RS one S2, sorry, two S2, two P6, right? So we have the first box. Right, we have the second box, then we have the third box in three degenerates. One, two. All right, so the first box, uh, the first arrow face, faces upward, the other one comes downward, the first one faces upward, the second one downward, four is gone. Now, when it comes to the P6, we fill one, two, three. How many is still left? Three. So, fill one, two, three. So, this is how we will fill electrons into what? Into orbitals uh, using the box diagram method. Now, I've also seen this. There are some numbers of observations that we have to make, which is the first one. The first one is that electrons are filled in singly before what? Pairing begins. As you can see in what? In carbon and oxygen and also even in neon, right? Now, Carbon has what some unpaired electrons. You can see here, this one is not paired, this one is not paired, this one is not, does not have electron in this, in this uh, y, uh, Z degenerate. Now, this one is paired, this one is not paired, this one is not paired. Carbon and oxygen have some number of what of unpaired electrons, but neon has none in the p orbital. In the p orbital, two are unpaired here, in the p orbital here, three are unpaired. All right? So now, species, species without unpaired electrons, like this one, like neon, Species without unpaired electron, without unpaired electrons, are said to be diamagnetic. 
Species without unpaired electrons are said to be what? Diamagnetic. You must take note of this. Right? Species without what? Unpaired electrons are said to be what? Diamagnetic. Now, species with unpaired electrons such as carbon and what? And oxygen are said to be what? Paramagnetic. Paramagnetic. All right? Species with what? With unpaired electrons such as carbon and oxygen are said to be what? Uh, paramagnetic. Now, they can be called ferromagnetic. They can be called ferromagnetic what species if that species is ion, ion Fe, or some other transition what metals that have magnetic property. Right now, this thing I said species without unpaired electrons are diamagnetic like neon. Now, species without unpaired what uh, especially with species with unpaired now. This one is without unpaired. Species with unpaired electrons are said to be what? Paramagnetic. But they can be called what? Ferromagnetic. Ferromagnetic. If that species is ion, Fe, or some other transition metal that have what? That have what? A magnetic property. Example of other transition metal may be gold, maybe silver, maybe tungsten, maybe cobalt, maybe nickel, right? Maybe vanadium and so on and so forth. Other transition metals. Now they can be called what ferromagnetic because they have what uh, they have magnetic what property. So basically, we have species without unpaired electrons, such as this called diamagnetic, and then species uh, with unpaired electrons, uh, which are called paramagnetic. And in some cases, they are called ferromagnetic. If that species is ion or some other transition metals. You have to take note of that and take note of that very, very well. All right. Another important point you need to note is that the box diagram metals helps us in demonstrating hybridization. 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 Now, what is hybridization? Hybridization is the mixing of atomic orbitals of different energies, right, to form hybrid orbitals of equal energies, right? So, in the coming videos, we are going to what, talk about hybridization in full form. But for now, for the scope of this video, this is what very, very much what enough. I've we'll talked about all the uh, Methods of writing electronic configuration, the SPDF method, the electron dot and cross method, and now I'll talk about the Bose diagram method. Please, if you do not understand any of them, head back to the principle that govern what writing electronic configuration first. After you are done, then you can pick up with what? With uh, taking what um, uh, the, the methods for writing electronic configuration, and you will see that you are all fine by yourself. But however, if you have any question at all, if you have any question regarding this, just drop it in the comment section and I will reply you. My name remains Ola Bitangod and I will see you in the next class. Thanks for watching.